All right, this is center of gravity, center of mass, and the centroid of a body. So we're gonna start with center of gravity. So I've got my XYZ plane. And I have some object. I'm going to take a differential element of that object and apply the differential weight. And that is located at Z tilde, X tilde, and Y tilde. Such that we can combine all of those DWs to get our center of gravity, or G. So if I had that same shape, and then I was given, this would be G, and G would have a weight acting on it, the entire weight of the object. And this happens at Z bar, X bar, and Y bar. So if we were looking at this, and we wanted to get our resultant force of all of these um, differential weights, we would just sum all of the forces in the z direction, such that the weight would be equal to the integral of the differential weights. So if we wanted to find the resultant moment about the y-axis, we would sum all of the moments about the y-axis, such that our resultant moment is going to be x bar times w, which is equal to the integral of x tilde dw. And then we wanted our resultant moment about the x-axis, so we sum the moments about the x-axis, and we get y bar w is equal to the integral of um, y tilde dw. And now to get our, um, to find our z bar, we need to rotate this such that we'd have z, y, and our element g our x-axis, have our weight acting down, and we would have x-bar, z-bar, and y-bar, such that if we were to sum the moments to get the resultant moment about the y-axis, some of the moments, we get z-bar, w, is equal to the integral of z tilde dw. And if we rearrange these equations, we get that x bar is going to be equal to the integral of x tilde dw divided by the integral of dw. y bar is going to be equal to the integral of y tilde dw divided by the integral of dw z bar would be equal to the integral of z tilde dw divided by the integral of dw, where our x bar, y bar, z bar represent the coordinates of the center of gravity. and x tilde, y tilde, and z tilde represent the coordinates of each particle in the body.
All right, so what if we wanted the center of mass of a body? Well, dW would be equal to the gravitational constant g times the differential mass. So we can take this, um, put each of these equal to g dm, and then the g's are going to cancel on the top and bottom such that x bar would be equal to the integral of x tilde dm divided by the integral of dm y bar would be equal to the integral of y tilde dm divided by the integral of dm and z bar would be equal to the integral of z tilde dm over the integral of dm Okay, so next would be centroid of a volume. So in this case, dm would be equal to the density times dv, such that x bar would be equal to the integral over the volume of x tilde dv divided by the integral of the um, of the volume over the volume y bar would be equal to the integral over the volume of y tilde dv divided by the integral over the volume of dv z bar would be equal to the integral over the volume of z tilde dv divided by the integral over the volume of dv. So now, let's look at this more practically. So say we had a cone And just looking at this, the cone is centered right here above the, um, about the y-axis such that x bar and z bar would be equal to zero. But we need to find y bar, okay? So we would use the disk method from integral calculus. So if you were to take a differential element of this cone, make it a disk, this disk would have a thickness of dy and a radius of r, which would also just be equal to z, such that your differential volume would be equal to pi z squared dy. And then you could use that to solve um, for y bar. Let's look at centroid of an area. Okay, in this case, our x bar is going to be equal to the integral over the area of x tilde dA divided by the integral over the area of dA, y bar would be equal to the integral over the area of y tilde dA divided by the integral of the area over the area of dA. So if we had some area on our xy plane such that y is a function of x. The centroid of this area would be located at x bar and y bar. So we have two different ways that we can um, do this integral. We have taking the segment into horizontal pieces
So if you were to look at this area as a bunch of horizontal bars with a thickness of dy, the centroid of this horizontal bar would be right here. The y tilde would just be equal to y. And then your x tilde would be equal to x over 2, where this is your x. Such that dA of this piece would be equal to x dy, and your x tilde would be x over 2, and your y tilde would be equal to y. Okay. The other way we could do this is vertical bars. So, we have a vertical bar. This is the centroid of it, such that this would be x tilde, which is the same thing as x. This is going to have a thickness of dx. And this y tilde is going to be equal to y over 2, so this distance. And then this entire length is y. So same thing here. So dA is going to be the length times the height. So the length is dx and the height is y, so it's y dx, and we know that y tilde is equal to y over 2, and x tilde is equal to x. So you can choose any one of these, um, either of these two methods, to determine the centroid of an area. It really just depends on what this um, function of x is, which, whichever one is easier. So next we're going to look at the centroid of a line. In this case, x bar is equal to the integral over the length L of x tilde dL divided by the integral over the line of dl, y bar is equal to the integral of y tilde dl divided by the integral of dl. So if we had a line such that this was one meter and this was two meters, the height. And we were given that this line is a function such that y is equal to 2x squared. So we need to look at the differential element. It would have dx and dy. And this would take place at x tilde equal to x and y tilde equal to y. So to find dl, we would use the Pythagorean theorem such that it would be equal to dx squared plus dy squared. And then if we multiply by 1, but 1 is going to be in the form of dx over dx, we would get dx over dx squared times dx squared plus dy over dx squared times dx squared. We could simplify this to dl is equal to the integral 
this would be 1. We're going to take out the dx squared plus dy over dx squared. And then dx squared is going to come out such that this is all multiplied by dx. So this is how you can relate this dx to x tilde, which is just x. So let's look at it in the opposite way so that we can look at um, dy. So rather than multiplying by 1 being dx squared over dx squared, we're going to use dy squared over dy squared. So that would be dx over dy squared, dy squared plus dy over dy squared times dy squared. And simplify this out. We'd get dx over dy squared plus 1. The dy squared pulls out such that it's just dy. So now we have what dl is equal to, either this or this, depending on how the line is set up. And we can easily find, in this case, dy dx. We take dy dx of this, we get that that's just 4x. So then we would want to use dl equal to the square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared times dx, which is the same thing as dl equal to the integral of 1 plus 4x squared dx, and we know that x tilde is equal to x and y tilde is equal to y. And we would use that to determine the centroid of that line.